Hello to all the cyclists out there. This video is going to be a bit different than what I usually do here in my channel, mainly skating based, but that is because the Tour de France 2022 is coming not just to Denmark, but it goes through my hometown, Slagelse. I also happen to have tried just about all the different sections of the stage. And in this video, I'm just going to give you a little preview of it. I'm going to go through the most exciting parts and portions that you want to be ready for when you watch it on TV put on this little neck tube so I can get the right wipe and uh, then I'm just gonna hop on my bike and and head to Roskilde the city the biggest city it's gonna pass in this stage where the stage starts it's an 88,000 people habitant city Roskilde it's a very historical city it has the UNESCO Cathedral that is pretty close to where the actual start goes Roskilde is still a pretty dense town so if you're a tourist looking to visit a bit before the start goes off the second Tour de France stage, Roskilde is really nice. I'm gonna show you from when I hop on the bike and do the full route. The route itself is 199 kilometers, but for obvious reasons, I can't cross the bridge. So I'm only gonna do 180 kilometers off the actual stage. However, the last 18 kilometers of crossing that, that bridge is gonna be incredibly exciting to watch on TV, given that if there's just any wind, the riders are going to be extremely exposed to that. If that happens to be a crosswind, who knows what could happen at this early point in the Tour de France already. So probably the biggest, most important thing to say about the start of the Tour, once the cyclists are actually going, is it's incredibly fast. A few turns, basically no hills. I think this is the first one. It's like a 2%. And I mean, today is not windy, but for 220 watts, I went 35 average so far for the first. 10 kilometers. So imagine how fast the peloton is going to go. It's going to be hard getting in a breakaway. So during the first 20 kilometers, the peloton is going to go through this national park called Skalungernes Land, which is incredibly beautiful. Also has very few turns and generally just a lot of cool nature life, as you can see here. So if you're in Denmark for a little longer than the duration of the stages, I would definitely pay that a visit. Three categories climbs and they're all within a very small area so if the breakaway hasn't gone already well you're for sure gonna see it on these climbs the climbs are all between one and one and a half kilometers and all between four and six percent of an average incline so it's really not too crazy and I'd rather call it hills than mountains making it to the top of the second categorized climb and it's a nice one there's even a portion with ten percent uh, right before the finish so it's gonna be a really cool sprint say this is the top and it's the final meters and also really nice place for spectators to be it's very accessible and there is a pedestrian path all over some more space because that's pretty much how all of Denmark is so after setting off in Roskilde the ride is going to stay pretty close to the coast for this entire ride so if there is a strong wind either going straight east or straight west it is going to be a tough stage and there might just be a lot of echelon riding and and people could get dropped early on so they gotta stay awake for this one so do you as a spectator crossing through the city of Holbeck and continuing up around this hilly area where they have the three hills three categorized climbs category four and then after that they're gonna head towards Kalambor and in Kalambor is where there is the one intermediate sprint of the day when they pass that sprint they are gonna go straight down following the coastline into this Slagelse region where I'm from. It is with a little less than 50 kilometers to go that we enter the region of Slagelse. And this is where things can get real nasty if there's a crosswind. As you can see, the entire peloton is gonna be completely exposed to the wind if it's coming from a western direction. If it is so, they're not just going to have a bridge of crosswind, they are going to have 50 kilometers of crosswind. For visitors and tourists, there is a lot of nice beaches, especially Stillingestrand, which is about halfway down there. So like I said, the city is only 10 kilometers from the actual coast, so one can easily take a one-day trip in there where there's nice shopping opportunities and just a really cozy town. 
is also Talibo, a Viking village, which is situated just about three, four kilometers from the actual coastline. So that's an obvious place to go visit when the tour crosses Slagelsen. This is gonna be exciting. With less than five kilometers until the start of the bridge, we enter what I think is the most narrow section of road so far in this stage. So it's gonna be some hell of a battle for position before they hit the bridge. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where my little preview is gonna end. For obvious reasons, you can't cross this bridge unless you're a Tour de France rider <laughs> during the tour. So I'll have to end it here. There's 18 kilometers on this bridge. What used to be is the former longest hanging bridge in the whole world. Uh, so it's quite a ride up there and uh, it's gonna end in Newport on the other side. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Uh, that's it for now. I, uh, I wish you a great summer and a joyful Tour de France. Cheers.